real estate agents market themselves? And do agents with similar personality types market themselves in similar fashions? Those are the questions that I'm attempting to answer in my upcoming book, The Power of Personality, A Realtor's Guide to Marketing to Your Strengths. Hello, everybody. I'm Kevin Shirley. I'm with Long & Foster Real Estate in Washington, D.C., and my website is realestute.com. I'm here today with a very special guest, Deborah Hodges of Group One Sotheby's International Realty in Boise, Idaho. And we'll be talking about Deborah's real estate story and specifically about her preferred sort of marketing strategies. Deborah, welcome. I'm so glad to have you here. Thank you so much, Kevin. I am happy to be here. It's awesome to see you. Deborah and I worked together many years ago. This is the first time we've seen each other in person for a very long time. So it's really a treat to, to have you here and to sort of reconnect and to, and to hear your story. Um, as a part of my research for this book, I've been talking to a ton of realtors and uh, it's just such a privilege to, to sort of get a sneak peek behind another realtor's business and how they do business and how they market themselves. And I've learned so much over the course of this. So um, I'd like to start off with a few sort of background questions so that folks get a sense of kind of where you are with real estate and what brought you here. So how long have you been licensed as a realtor and what was your professional life before real estate? That's a great question. Uh, I, I have been licensed since 1994. And being that I was 19 years old at the time, I really didn't have a profession uh, besides working at the mall uh, as a kid. <laughs> so um, I was born into real estate. My mom uh, is in real estate and still is to this day. And she's uh, turning 81 this year. So, wow. And so growing up, did you, did you help your mom with stuff? Did, were you like a de yeah. facto, were you labeling letters and that kind of stuff as a kid? Yeah, actually I showed property because my mom owned a property management company and I didn't have to be licensed to show rental property. And my mom would pay me, um, if I, uh, got that place rented. So there, I also did my mom's taxes. Uh, <laughs> I did. I did quite a bit as a, I was a very entrepreneurial high school kid. So, okay. I'm going to come back to the entrepreneur in you in a minute. <laughs> um, but I, if you would just describe a little bit about your sort of professional trajectory in real estate from the time you got licensed to, to where you are now, give us a little sense of sort of what that, what that journey looked like for you. Oh, that's a great question because I have done it all. So when I, first um, left Idaho. I went to Seattle. That's where I got my first real estate license in 1994. And I was a transaction coordinator uh, for small brokerage there. And 1994 is the year that buyer uh, agency came out. And prior to that, all realtors represented the sellers. So I went to work for this really sweet team who decided to open a brokerage that only represented buyers. And I had a lot of fun with them. And as we went into the mid nineties recession, I uh, picked up my stuff and moved to DC uh, in 1995. And that's where I worked uh, for the dream team, uh, Suzanne Goldstein and Phyllis Alexander. And I worked uh, for, for them or with them in a capacity for quite a while, um, being, you know, transaction coordinator, buyer's agent, manager, um, and did a lot uh, in that capacity. So I've always enjoyed being part of um, a collaborative group. Uh, when I came out to Boise in 2003, I really jumped into development and new construction. And I really enjoyed representing builders and working with developers and doing something new because I had always done residential resale. And uh, the bottom fell out from under that uh, during the recession. And as I came back around, I went back on my own as a solo agent, focusing on residential resale. And I was um, 
when my children were small here, I also was a buyer's agent for about five years, but um, left that team in 2019 and have been independent since then again. So I've kind of done it all. Got it. Got it. So you're in the, I, I don't know, I don't know much about your market. So could you tell us a little bit about the Boise real estate market? Sort of what are you licensed? I mean, do you handle outside the city and the suburbs? What's yeah. most of your business? What does that look like? So I do live um, near downtown Boise. So I tend to focus on what we, the county, Ada County. So that includes Boise, Meridian, Star, CUNA, Eagle. So it includes the kind of bedroom towns um, close to Boise. And then in the past, I've worked Canyon County, which is a little more rural and um, other parts of kind of the country. But um, I feel like recently, probably the last five years, I've really focused on more the I'm a city girl. I mean, I lived in DC for almost right. 10 years. So, uh, you know, I really enjoy the urban side of Boise. Got it. And so give us a little bit of flavor of your market. Are you, like a lot of most places right now are in a really strong seller's market. Yes. Does that hold true oh. for Boise <laughs> as well? And, and sort of what are your, your current challenges? Uh, give us a little sense of what that's like. Yeah, I recently looked at an a infographic on inventory levels across the country, and Idaho is in the top uh, in terms of negative inventory. So we are down 68% um, um, from the last year. We have ridiculous, I heard yesterday that there was a house in DC that was listed for 250 and had 88 offers. Right. Um, so that's not uncommon here. We don't have 88 offers, but you know, $100,000 over asking. Um, in, inventory is very, very tight. And we are one of those places that has attracted a lot of incoming uh, migration. We have been open as a state uh, for the entire pandemic for the most part. We had a small shutdown in March and April, but restaurants have been open since May of last year. My kids have been in school uh, except for uh, eight weeks between November and December. So for the most part as a state, people are able to function, run their restaurants and do business as no normal. And so, so it you've has got been people moving in from other areas because yes. of the pandemic? Yes, absolutely. It, and people wanted, you know, we call it bug out land. <laughs> um, I have a lot of friends that work other parts of the state. I have a really good friend up in Northern Idaho and they're just getting bombarded with people saying, I need my 40 acres now uh, so I can escape uh, for the next pandemic. So I think, um, so our, and my market uh, tends to be, um, you know, it's interesting. A lot of people come to Idaho thinking it's the next frontier, but our frontier has long been uh, recognized and established. So people are surprised about how expensive Boise is. Um, you know, our median income or medium home price is, you know, well over between like 450 and five. And you and I know the median home price usually is not a good indication of what you're actually gonna pay. And so right now, like an average home in Boise is between seven and 800,000. So I think people are really surprised um, at, at our market because it is very strong. It's a highly desirable place to live. It's so easy to live in Boise. It's so safe um, and people just like being here. Right, and so in your business, do you, do you represent mostly buyers, mostly sell, sellers? Is it mostly a mix? And for your buyers, I'm curious about sort of strategies that you're using now to sort of help them kind of get their arms around uh, operating in a seller's market? Yeah, I, I do typically have a stronger buy side um, and have for a long time. And I'm sure you can remember from our time in the mid nineties that I'm still a mama bear. Uh, you know, I like to represent my clients and um, I think, uh, no, you know, obviously what someone's willing to pay for it has to be strong. I think price is always 
uh, makes a difference. And then what differentiates started, we never had a buyer take an inspection out here until this year. So okay. we've always been very fortunate to protect uh, our clients' rights to inspect homes and really know what's happening. But this last year, people have come in from other areas where it's typical to remove an inspection and they've started winning. So um, removing inspections can be a big deal. We're not able to do pre-inspections very often here. So it's a big risk. Um, obviously strong earnest money. We have here, our standard earnest money is 1%, whereas in DC it was five um, at the time. So you know, getting people to kind of up that earnest money, uh, releasing it to the seller um, early, uh, basically anything we can do to make that seller happy there from, you know, giving rent free rent backs for the time they need to get out of the house, um, escalation clauses. We do use them. Uh, one thing that's worked really well lately is a no cap escalation, uh, which is kind of new to the market here. So the nice thing is, is from our late 90s boom in the DC, I was given a lot of tools uh, right. for my tool chest. So <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. So let's get into sort of why we're talking that the meat of all of this is sort of one, I wanted to talk a little bit, a tiny bit about your personality profile. And then I wanted to talk a little bit about how you market yourself. So you fell into, I, I ask everyone who participates in the research to this project to fill out a quick questionnaire based on the Myers-Briggs personality profile um, archetype. And um, you fell into what's known as the ESTP or entrepreneur profile. And, and when I read that, and I was reading a little bit about the entrepreneur profile type, I, I really felt that resonated a lot for you. Did, you. did you feel like that sort of represented, accurately represented kind of who you are as a business person? Yeah, I think um, I did a pretty intensive um, Myers-Briggs uh, coaching class in Sun Valley a couple of years ago. And I think what really resonated or made me laugh was that um, the really the external portion of it versus like, so the group of ESTPs had naturally in the room kind of glommed together with right. where we sat which was funny because we're just social animals. Yeah. And so I think that part uh, is what really resonated to me is to say that like, I am outgoing and I let, I, my energy comes from other people. So um, I'm not the person that recharges alone. So right. I recharge off people. So uh, I think that part is what really kind of cracked me up about it. Got it. So the, the, the big question I'm asking every agent that I come in contact with is, you know, in those moments when you wake up at two o'clock in the morning and you think, holy crap, if I don't get some business soon, I'm not going to pay my mortgage next month. Like when you have those moments and you really get to your desk the next day and say, OK, I've got a really bump and grind to get some business. What is that strategy that you that is like your go to marketing strategy to fill your pipeline when you get anxious? And so I was reading your response and it sounds like you're really sort of um, you want to get face to face with people. You do you bring some kind of client appreciation gift or Popeye gift. Talk a little bit about kind of how you structure that process, how you go about that. Do you pick up the phone? Do you call? Do you do a drive-by, pop-by? Do you make an appointment for coffee? Talk a little bit about that process and who do you decide to go and see when you decide to, to, do, to implement this strategy? So I, I definitely kind of fall more in ninja coaching. So I, I definitely, my relationships uh, in my business are really important to me. So my, my automatic strategy is how am I serving my relationships and how am I serving my clients and who, you know, who needs me? What are people I'm fortunate because I, I do hear from my database probably on a daily basis, whether through Facebook, um, asking me for a vendor, um, referral. Um, I do have 
every house I've ever sold um, in Boise, I have a calendar um, with their home anniversary. So I am the date they bought. And for instance, like on their sixth year, I send them crumble cookies delivery because the sixth anniversary is candy. So okay. I like to make sure that they are recognized for um, the time that they spend in the house. Um, and I think with Ninja, it's like every person in my database knows four to five people who will have a real estate need in the next year. So I'm constantly just thinking about how I can help, you know, my newsletter. Um, I'm constantly mentioning how um, I have relationships all across the country. I have relationships in DC, some of my strongest real estate. I have relationships in Florida, California. So letting people know that I'm their person, no matter where they go is helpful. So for me, that two o'clock in the morning, if I'm like stressed out about my pipeline, I would be focusing on my relationships. I wouldn't be focusing on where, what, how much I need to spend on Zillow or where I need to buy an advertisement. I'm really looking to see how do I make sure I'm communicating with my 80 to 90 raving fans to make sure that they understand that I can provide uh, real estate help to everybody in their circle, not just the people here in Boise. And um, I reminded everybody on my January newsletter and I had three re outgoing referrals that month. So um, one even that I sold a house to them here, they sold that house, moved to Albuquerque, bought a house in Albuquerque and now they're getting relocated to Portland they called me and said, we want the version of you in Portland. Can you find them for us? So right. I find that to be a huge compliment. That's and, very powerful. Yeah, very. It, and it fills my ego. I loved it. I was like, <laughs> this is awesome. So I felt really good. So I think that um, when I look at my go-to, um, I'm really focusing on my sphere. I'm really... Uh, how can I help my friends, my past clients? Um, and last year I did 29 transactions and 22 of them come out of my sphere. So I really, my goal for 2021 is to be a hundred percent by referral. So that would Got be it. my- question. And so are you, I, I, you know, this is a question that comes down to style really, which is when you're in front of somebody, do you ask for a referral? And, and what language do you use if you do? So, man, I wish I could be in front of someone right now. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I do a big party every year, my Memorial Weekend party. And I am like trying to figure out if I can have one this year. Um, right. Both my husband and I are inoculated. And I just want to be like, okay, if you're taxi come on over so right I just I'm trying to figure out how I can do that because I miss people like crazy um that must be very but, tough for like all the ease out there all yes, the you know extroverts yes, pandemic yes. must have been really tough yes yeah absolutely like so about three months ago I started just calling you know friends and clients <clears throat> to start walking with me three days a week. So now I have a group of about five or six women who we do one-on-one -on -one hikes or walks um, two to three times a week. We're touching base saying, hey, do you want to walk Monday? Do you want to walk Wednesday? And I'm just spending tons of time trying to get in front of people because it's not for business, but for my own mental wellness. Um, right. I bet you get business out of that. Yeah, actually, you know, I, I do actually. One of the big projects that I... Um, I had a client that I, she, she was on the last flight out of Myanmar, um, to get back to the United States. They, they were able to escape not only what the unrest that's happening now, but, uh, because of the pandemic and I had sold them a house, uh, a year ago and thank goodness, cause they had a place to come. And I said, you know, and she was brand new to town. She had no way to meet anybody because then we were uh, kind of in the pandemic. And so I said, why don't we go for a walk? 
and her husband uh, has now contacted me and I'm going to be working some commercial multifamily and possibly future condos uh, with him as a development. And so it could be amazing. That's awesome. So, so go yes. ahead. Well, I was, it's, so what I'm saying is as far as getting in front of people and asking for referrals, uh, you know, I'm probably definitely a old school ABC girl. I'm always be selling. <laughs> so, um, I, I, I definitely am always, uh, I'm always making sure that people know, uh, I didn't always do that, but I feel like now I, with, I'm more <clears throat> older and <laughs> mature, and I think I like to let people know what I'm doing for business. And, right. So you don't get uh, in your head about it. You're just out there. Yeah, I think uh, it's still easy to get in your head. I recently had a coaching call where he wanted me to highlight everybody uh, who knows and trusts me that would refer me. And then everybody that it was like three stages of people in my database. And I'm like, well, how do I know and trust that they would refer me? Like, I know he's like, okay, let's switch this up. Let's highlight everybody that you could just pick up the phone and call. I'm like, oh, okay. I got that. <laughs> right. That's, that's, that's a clear delineation for you. Yeah. It's like, oh, okay. These are people I feel comfortable calling. No problem. <laughs> so, got it. and got just it. looking, it was fun. Cause he, I even have it right here. You know, I was like going through my database and just highlighting the people that I would think are my raving fans that continue to stay in contact with me. And, um, it's kind of fun to see uh, what that looks like and, and how I can continue to serve uh, those clients. Got it. So you mentioned a few minutes ago, like you do not lean into like buying leads, Zillow or wherever. Are there other strategies that you've maybe used in the past that didn't bear fruit or that you spent a lot of money on that weren't worth it for you? I'm curious about those kinds of, it, sound, you, it sounds like you also do some kind of monthly newsletter. So yes. uh, how does that like, how does that tie in to, is that something that goes out that you do yourself, that you hire out? How do you get that out the door? So let's start with what I've tried and adjust. So anything that puts me in front of strangers is difficult for me. So, right. um, so Zillow leads that come into me, um, I don't, they're not, I have no way to know if that person is my ideal client. So anything that I'm paying where strangers would be showing up on my phone are the ones that I find uh, most difficult uh, for me personally, because I really prefer um, the, a warmer uh, approach. I want to be able to, um, I think I'm not comfortable selling myself. Um, I want people to already have been told that I'm great. Right. And then I can pick up the phone and say, oh, awesome. And we can move forward together without me having to tell them how great I am or build trust. Um, right. Because I think I'm just uh, past that at this age. <laughs> right. Got it. <laughs> so, uh, so yes, I, um, so if it's like, we don't get sign calls anymore. I don't know if anybody does, but right. I remember back in the day, everybody would call the number on the sign. So I don't have to worry about sign calls or, and I know I do get the ones I do like off Zillow though, are agent finder. So I do have a lot of people that find me on agent finder. So I don't okay. pay Zillow for agent finder and they can just look me up uh, based on my production and my reviews. I do show up, I think, within the first two pages of Agent Finder. Um, so that, that's why I keep my Zillow profile and I have 75 five-star reviews um, on there. So um, the other thing I would say is uh, at the beginning of the pandemic, I did start a monthly email newsletter. And um, I do, I have one person that helps me uh, with the writing portion. So it's my... It's all my voice. It's all my information. She, I just pay her to put the words together. And um, she also writes, uh, I also basically dictate two blogs a month with her. 
and um, she puts them together and then I proof them and we put them out. So I started that in January of last year and then I put a new website together. So really focusing on providing good content. Um, I And then I also, I think in the past, I was always afraid after closing to stay in touch with people. So that's been my transition the last five years is to not be afraid of everything after closing and to continue to stay in touch, continue to be uh, of service and, you know, providing vendors, tax information. Um, right now, rates are so good, you know, letting people know that, you know, you might want to pull money for get your kid's college or you might want to um, remodel something, you know, just being a, of service that way has been really helpful. And that that those kind of messages are included in your in your newsletter or yeah. those are just in individual messages. So so what tell me a little bit more about the content that goes into your newsletter every month that you ha, it sounds like you have sort of one kind of long form article and then some other sort of tidbits. Tell me a no, little bit usually, about yeah. how you decide about the content. Yeah, so it's always a short intro, like something funny, like um, you know, I'm my last March newsletter was like, Hey, I'm planning, we're going next week for a 10 day camping trip. So I was like, I'm planning this 10 day camping trip. And I'm like, totally stocking my garden because I planted these tulips and I'm waiting for them to put their little heads up. So right. just so it's very personal, very personal to me to say, here's what, you know, hi. And then I do a market update and my market update is I am I, I do think as an, a realtor, we all need to be very uh, informed on the data of our market. So yeah. you can't just skip over that stuff and pretend to be good at real estate. Right. I think you really need to know your numbers. And I am a numbers girl. Um, the graphs that my clients get to review with me whether, when they're actually working with me, whether it be at the buyer consult or uh, during a listing appointment, those graphs continue in the newsletters and they know how to read them now because I taught them. So, and then I also provide, you know, a written update on the market. And then I usually will throw in the two latest blogs. Uh, Got it. And then so I you use, repurpose information from your blog onto your, your, yeah. Cause content. nobody will see the blogs if I don't put them in the newsletter. Cause Got I don't it. really, I do post them on social media, but I have, I don't always promote them. Um, but I do put them in the blog or in the newsletter for my clients to see, cause then they may not see them. And then, uh, I always put any new or sold to show people what I'm, you know, that I am actually still buying and selling real estate. So, um, so, and it, it has a very standard, format. And I get really, you know, I'm fortunate because I have really kind uh, and amazing clients who say, wow, that was really amazing. Or I love getting this, you know, even if you get one person right. a month that says, Hey, it's like, okay, I'm going to keep doing this. You know, <laughs> it does give you motivation to keep doing it. Cause uh, especially when you, when you hear people are actually paying attention and reading it, it, it does reinforce the importance of that, th those connections. Absolutely. And uh, I was always, you know, I'm not a fan, I think, to share with others, I've never been a fan of getting email, correct? So right. I've always said, well, if I don't want it, then nobody else is going to want it. So I am very, um, you have a very high bar. I do. Content. And I want it to be I need to be serving my clients and providing information that's helpful for them. And, and I, I'm not just looking to say, Hey, um, and, you know, I wrote some very personal things um, when I started the newsletter at the beginning of the pandemic, you know, I was very um, vulnerable as they say, and I have continued to keep that voice and to share um, that it's not about Deborah Hodges. It's about my community it's right. about my, my city. It's about my um, clients and what they, they need. So um, I think that's one of, one of the best things I've done. Uh, my new website uh, has been really helpful in 
I think one of your questions on your thing was like, where are my shortcomings? And it's all things technology. Right. So, <laughs> so I But it sounds like you're you're on top of you're on top of your technology in ways that a lot of agents are not on top of. You know, just be, just simply getting uh, an, an e newsletter out once a month is well beyond a lot of agents that I talk to. So you get an A plus, even yeah. if it's something that you worry about. Yeah, and I think I'm just constantly trying to figure out where to get those, you know, those the touches right with your right. database. And we, I do a postcard. My office is kind enough to have a system where they send a monthly postcard out. Um, so I pay for that and that goes out to all my past clients um, and it provides and what kind of content is in that postcard. The postcard actually is a really amazing coupon. It's not a coupon like you would get in a value pack. It's like, like this month, it was a, a coupon for so much money off of purchase at the local nursery that people love. Um, it's for a buy one, get one breakfast at a luxury um, restaurant. So it. it's, it, it's the buy one, get one to the pumpkin patch that everybody loves in the fall. So they, um, so people must look forward to those. They do. I think some people, especially like some of them, I think some of them, they probably toss in the trash. And I think some of them, uh, are kind of like, okay, where's the pumpkin patch one or where's the buy one, get one at Richard's. So right. I think they, uh, so, but you know, it's a small, uh, price they pay to keep those touches and just working with my coach on um that process of the aunt the home anniversary has been a tough one for me because I I am a process oriented person so if I don't have everything perfect I don't do it I mean that's a huge struggle for a lot of people is yeah, we do so have like, such high high sort of bars for ourselves that getting something out becomes sort of tricky. Right. So I started um, this year, I offered up a real estate review for my clients. And that was a big one because I thought about it and thought about it and thought about it. And a real estate review is basically like what your insurance guy does every year, where he says, let's look at your insurance policies and you know how are you using this vehicle and how are you living in your house? Well, a real estate review is basically the same thing to say, here's what's going on around you. Here's, you know, where the market's at. And, you know, it's a more of a one-on-one -on -one conversation. And I've been hearing about it um, and wanting to do it, but because I didn't have a system and I didn't have like exactly. So then I offered it up in my newsletter without the system in place. Just to right. say, okay, I'm just going to put it out there. And then and you I, develop the system as the system. Yes. And so someone says, hey, I want a real estate review. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> so <laughs> I had to, so then I decided that I was going to do it as a Zoom call and that they had to choose coffee or wine. And we either would have a coffee appointment or a wine appointment. And we would do, and I had all my stuff. I did a, I had it already, and I. And did you it. send them something ahead of time, or just let that that meeting be it? The meeting. So I said, hey, I sent them the Zoom invite, and I said, okay. Once I they picked coffee, I sent them a thing for a Sunday morning, and we jumped on. And I just kind of went through. I did a small CMA, uh, but I let them know that it's not property specific; it's neighborhood specific. That's the way I decided to structure it. Was that I would do a small CMA. For the solds around their neighborhood kind of show them where things were at with that yeah. and then go into the graph that goes into the newsletter to say so that I could then reteach them how that graph works so that when they see it in the newsletter they'll understand it even further and then just talk about what's happening in in town in the neighborhood in general and then we said goodbye and and then her, the next day her husband texted me that her father-in-law wanted to do a 1031 exchange. There you go. So it was- So for something that you just completely, you you winged it, yeah. you were able to get, you know, you were successful with it and you got business out of it. Yes, yes. That's terrific. Yeah. So that one- so that's realty, something that you'll continue doing. Yes. And so the only thing I'm working on my process is my home anniversaries. 
I had a coaching call and we talked quite a bit about it because um, I've always just focused on the six year and I have, and I literally have every one, like today, my calendar tells me whose anniversary it is for right. their home anniversaries. And I just, I'm like stuck. I don't know what to do because I want to like do something. I feel like I have to have this process or do something big for everyone. So then I do right. nothing. And right. uh, yes, so the I perfect ordered, becomes the enemy of the good. Yes, exactly. So I did order cards. I ordered blank real estate cards, and I'm going to start sending those out the week before. And then I'm going to call everybody on the day of just to say hello. Got it. And um, so I'm working on that process. I think you'll be really surprised at how warmly those calls are received because people aren't thinking about their house anniversary, <laughs> but that you are becomes so important to them that, yeah. that, that, that you're thinking only of them that day. And, and it really, it really is powerful for, for, for those calls and that, that Popeye or that gift um, because they, they know that you're, you're just thinking of them that day. You're not thinking of all the hundred of other people that maybe you've helped, but just of them. And it really is important. Yeah. And then I just, the last two things I do for marketing is I do wine delivery for Thanksgiving every year. So um, I do deliver. So I actually have an order form on the newsletter in October. And okay. I say, if you want wine, you pick red or white. And then we hand deliver it the week before Thanksgiving. That's um, nice. And yeah, it's, it's, it's a more expensive because I do use a local uh, winery. Um, but it's, it's just something I enjoy doing. And then um, and that does get you face to face with people. Yeah. Oh my gosh. My husband had to take over my deliveries last year because I was obviously hungry for some interaction. Right. <laughs> and I spent like 20, I was supposed to do like 40 deliveries, I think that day. And like five hours in, I had done 11. <laughs> 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 and he's, so the next day I, I had to give him half my deliveries because he wouldn't talk to anybody and I was talking to everybody. So I had a blast. Yeah, it was really fun. And then uh, the other thing I'm working on to set up for this year is a fall family photo shoot. So okay. I'm going to do that as a, as a, as a, a sponsored event um, so that people could come in and do a photo shoot with their family. That's great. Yeah. So the final question that I'm asking everybody is what advice would you give a brand new baby real estate agent who was an entrepreneur, an ESTP, someone of your personality profile type? What advice would you give a brand new agent? Well, ESTPs don't know any, like we have, what is it though? How do I want to say this? So ESTPs, don't know any strangers. Okay. So we tend to make friends easily, right? Right. We're the life of the party. So um, I feel like it's important to anybody that's in that ESTP, you're going to have a sphere and you're going to have be easily um, accessible and talk to people and friendly um, and really focus on that circle. Um, I think as an ESTP, I did not want to burden my sphere. I felt like I was bothering them um, until I realized that I was a benefit for them and they needed to know it. So I think that being able to feel confident in tapping into your sphere, because that's probably going to be the strongest thing that an ESTP could have going into a new, any new career, frankly. Right. Um, and so, but you have to see yourself as a benefit and not a bother. And, and was that hard for you? And, and what, was there something, was there a light bulb that went off at some point that made you think, you know, what I am being my friend is a value? Yes. Yeah, because I think that I realized that, oh, 
I would much rather have my friends working with me than someone else. Like I full heartedly believe that I am the best option for them. And I was an aha moment where I was like, oh my gosh, I really need to make sure my clients know that I am the best option for them, that I care more than anybody else, that I treat each transaction like it's my own, like you're not just a number to me. So I feel like when I believe that myself, that it transferred into even more confidence and um, allowing myself to work with my sphere. And now I'm even surprised, like I had a mom or a couple that's like a parent um, at my kids' schools reach out to me to help them buy and sell. And I, I'm always like so humbled and surprised to say, yeah. you want to work with me? Right. Because, you know, I think, I don't know what your stats are, but, you know, we have 8,000 realtors in our MLS. And I truly believe that everybody in Boise knows at least five realtors. Right. So if I'm the person that gets the phone call, I am deeply humbled. So. Got it. Well, Deborah, thank you so much for being with me here today and sharing your story. Um, And thank all of you out there for watching. Um, As part of my ongoing book research, I'm trying to speak with about 200 agents all across the United States. I'm about halfway done at this point, but I'm hearing so many interesting, important, useful stories that I don't wanna wait until the end when the book is published to kind of get some of this information out there. Um, So stay tuned for more interviews like this. And if you're an agent and you're interested in participating in my research, just reach out. I'll get you set up and, and we'll be able to talk a little bit about the way you market yourself as well. So till next time, everybody, I'm Kevin Shirley. Uh, Long and Foster Real Estate in Washington, D.C. Never too busy for any of your referrals. And Deborah Hodges, thank you. Boise, Idaho, never too busy for any of your Boise, Idaho referrals. And um, stay tuned, everybody. Thanks so much for being here. Thank Bye-bye. You. Thanks, Deborah. Thank you.